Hey guys, how you doing? This is JP Saricolia coming to you once again with another book review. And this time I want to review uh, Tomb Raider Archives number four. This is the last archive, the last volume in this collection that was published uh, by uh, the, the Dark Horse Comics uh, for the Tough Cow uh, Productions run. And definitely, I, I, I like this one. Here you can see, uh, let me go on detail. This is an introduction by Joe Jusco. This is the art of Joe Jusco, which is always very realistic. Uh, pretty cool that is there. It, it follows the same format as the ones, the previous ones. Pretty cool. Uh, Tomb Raider. Here you see this is Brian Chink's art, and here you got Tomb Raider. If it's uh, if it's uh, unique or exciting, Lara Croft goes after it. And of course, you got the introduction, and you see all the list of people. Uh, the you know the the people that have been involved. The superstars like Adam Hughes, Billy Tan, Tony Daniel, Andy Park. Q Chaw, David Finch, Joe Fusco, Fusco, and many more. And again, this is the art of uh, Brian Ching. Uh, pretty cool. Definitely. Crystal Dynamics, uh, Square Enix, Star Horse Comics. So now let's go in detail. This is actually a large book. Uh, and then this is Daryl Banks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's in the interior art. Uh, he had one issue, and we're going to go in detail on that one. Uh, this is, um, of course, this is actually uh, Michael Lopez, very known, well known. Uh, artist, he does a lot of uh, race pinups. Uh, so we'll, uh, he's also in one of the issues. So uh, here are the table contents. Of course, this four volume after the three uh, last volumes, they contain the uh, the issues number one to fifty of the main run. There were other runs. Uh, there were other uh, different um, versions. You got journeys, um, and they're all included here. And there were other, uh, you know, standalone. Uh, one shoot, um, one shot um, uh, issues. Uh, they're still missing some, and we're going to go in detail about that. But here is that part. So there is a lot of this. Pretty cool. They have a table of contents, and it has an introduction by Joe Jusco. Uh, Joe Jusco has a very realistic art style, and there is an issue here in the end that you're going to notice that with the, the art is so beautiful. Uh, Joe Jusco was. Um, very influential, uh, a big part in the 90s, early 90s, if you remember, of those who were part of the 90s, you might remember those little um, uh, trading cards with the, the, the art was very realistic, um, you know, of Marvel, Marvel masterpieces, and he was actually the one that painted all of them. Uh, and definitely one of those, I remember the 90s when I was into the trading card um, collection, I was collecting a lot of them, I definitely was very... Uh, uh, I was uh, really in tune with it. I really loved it, and I love his art. And here's David Finch. This is an introduction. This is another book. And, of course, this is Joe Jusco. Very realistic. Pretty cool. This is a script by Dan Jurgens, and this is actually the artist by uh, Mark Pajarillo. Pajarillo, actually, uh, which is funny about this, he was involved with a lot of comic book art. I love his art. I love, really love his art. I like this collection. You can notice there's a lot of great artists here. Uh, there's multiple artists involved in this in this book, but this art is great. Barilo was in comics for a while, but now he left comics. He was working for Marvel. He did stuff for DC. He did stuff, for, of course, for Top Cow from Image. But then he um, he went into work for uh, you know left the comics and went into um, you know the video games, uh, video game design, doing a lot of uh, the background and a lot of art for it. And he's working actually. He works for Naughty Dog, which is definitely uh, a cool tidbit for you because actually Naughty Dog created. Uh, and it says the creators of, of course, the Uncharted series. So he works for, uh, he has designed a lot of the background, a lot of the art for Uncharted. Uh, what really tells you the influence, in this case, of uh, this art, of this artist, uh, of Tomb Raider in general, to that, you know, Uncharted. A lot of people would say, I love Uncharted more than I love of Tomb Raider. But Uncharted was definitely took a lot of cues, in, in particularly in the art from Tomb Raider. And this is Tomb Raider number zero. This is um, they had, uh, this is actually the art of Brian Ching. I love Brian, Ch uh, Brian Ching as uh, art. Not a fan of his uh, the feet. And you're gonna notice, I'm gonna point that out. The feet is too long or it's too big. It seems like she has really, and the legs are really long. But I love Brian Ching. This actually, I think that was a Wizards uh, special. Um, the, the, uh, the, the writing of the script is by Fiona K. Avery. Fiona K. Avery, it's a, she's been a writer for television programs. But she has done a lot of stuff with Tub Cow, with Image. She, she has done stuff for Marvel. Um, not a lot of stuff, but she's actually the one that takes the writing for Journeys. Uh, and you're going to notice that. And, of course, Brian Ching. I love Brian Ching. Definitely his art is pretty, pretty decent and pretty good. 
Um, uh, I apologize if you hear all that sound in the background. They're cutting the grass. Um, the, for some reason, they decide to cut the grass Saturday morning, early in the morning, instead of doing it, you know, throughout during the week. Uh, my apologies if that is bothersome to some, uh, but you know, just pay no mind. But look, look at this art. Look at this art. It is really gorgeous. Definitely love it. Definitely like it. Too bad that you know. He was not involved in much of the project, and that's something that you're going to see here a lot. A lot of these artists are great, but they only did one issue. Uh, but look at Brian. It really looking. It looks good. Really looks good. All the art. I like the way he does. Some things are kind of unbelievable. Like for example, this. She's jumping like that and holding those guns, those Uzis. Nobody holds Uzis like that. I'm sorry. I know. I, I, even 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 Lara Croft has to kind of. You know, she's not super woman, but yeah, you can see that. But you know, it's not, it's, you know, no 90s stuff. This is early 2000s stuff. Um, and here you got the boots, like I said, the really large boots, which kind of anatomically incorrect. But you know, it is just the art. It's just cool to watch it like that, you know, to, to really, you know, see this art evolving. And definitely, she uh, he makes her look really, really good. She looks great there. And here you go, another. She looks really phenomenal, but again, look at those boots. Look at those shoes. She got big feet. Well, <laughs> based on the art. But yeah, really look at that. Really like it, man. This is good. You know, like I said, you know, I was reading, you know, and here we got, we have another Andy Park cover. Love Andy Park's art. I think Andy was the best, or the all the artists involved in this project, he was the best. And this is another script by Dan Jurgens, and uh, and this is one mistake here. Uh, this is um, the pencils by Michael Lopez, and which you know we're gonna go more detail about him. But you have Eric Basildua, but they he uh, there's a typo here. Basildua is Basildua. So this is there are two mistakes that I found in this collection, and this is the first one. the The name was misspelled here. It's kind of, you know, I know it might be just a nitpick, but if, imagine if you are the artist and you're excited that something has been written about you are, and all of a sudden you find out that they misspell your name. So shame on Dark Horse and shame on the people that actually were involved in this production. They mess up big time here. Uh, sorry. Maybe they correct that in, 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 in second edition because this is the first print. Uh, but here you can see, uh, this is the art. If I'm not mistaken, Michael Lopez is the, the, the primary art. If you look at the face, and we're going to go in detail on that, you're going to notice that it's definitely Michael Lopez. Michael Lopez is very known. He does a lot of art for a lot of different companies, but primarily he does a lot of pinups for himself. He does a lot of art for himself. Very racy pinups, a lot of naked bodies. So he does that a lot. And um, here's a uh, look at this. I like this one. I like that one. And I think Basil Dua did kind of help with some of the part of the, maybe did some of that. There's something here that kind of looks at like Basil Dua here, but not necessarily so with the face. But, uh, well, I think, you know, they, there was, um, I don't know if he was doing maybe backgrounds, because that's what Basil Du has done for Tough Cow for many, many years. He does a lot of background work. He kind of do the finished part. Uh, but here you go. You can see. This is just kind of like an intro. This, I think, was a Wizard special. This was not part of the main run. It was just pro produces later on. And look at her. This is, this is definitely Michael Lopez. This is art, this style. Look at this one. Definitely, this is Michael Lopez. This is what Michael Lopez does. Kind of like that. Very racy. And of course, you look good on this. You know, the, the, the what he does, this type of pinup art. A lot of people are fans of it. And um, nothing wrong with it. And uh, But here you can see. I, I like his actually panel layout. It's pretty clean, pretty fun. And, um, you know, it's cool. I like Journeys. And I, uh, Journeys 1 was actually one of my really favorite ones on this run. I definitely really love loved the art. And uh, look at this. It's one of my favorite covers. It, this the, the, this journeys were created uh, as a part of a continuation on a separate uh, with them. Top Cow, of course, Top Cow was producing the main run, but they were also wanting to try other things. So the journeys is more like a different stories, kind of solo stories. Uh, and this is the art of Drew Johnson. He's the one that did the cover. And of course, Fiona, who, who was involved in this project, he's the one. She's the one writing. But here you can see, I really love Drew uh, depiction, particularly on this issue. This is the one, my favorite, the issues that he did, the first one. And, and Lara's just going into a pirate adventure. So there's different adventures in different locale, locales, different locations, different places, different timelines. Um, really cool. I really like the way he did it. I really remember this one. I really like this one. That's still one of my favorite ones. I still have it somewhere, you know, in my book, um, in my collection of old comic books somewhere. 
my box probably in the attic. <laughs> That's where I have a lot of my, my books. You know, I really don't collect you know comic book issues anymore, single issues. I just don't see the point. But look at that. She looks great there. She looks funny uh, and cheeky, which is good. And and there, okay, this is a, the second part. This is Adam Hughes cover, and he uh, again Drew Johnson is doing the art um, here. Uh, you know, he it continues on. It's good. I, I, I don't know. This is not as fun as the first one for some reason. With the art. There's a lot of the inks a little darker. It's the same ink inker, um, but it's just different, which is interesting. Um, I don't know if it's the color. Sometimes the colors have a big impact in the way you know comic book stories are, are created. Um, of course, and this is another Adam Hughes cover, a pretty dark one, pretty cool one actually. And uh, Drew Johnson again. Drew Johnson does a really nice physical definition of uh, of Lara, I could say. Uh, you can see this. So these are like really solo stories, solo adventures. They really play out pretty well. Um, really cool. So these are different stories, different adventures. They're not going with the main line of the main story. They're more like self-contained. Um, but they're really, really cool. That's another Adam Hughes cover. Really Adam Hughes. I don't know why Joe Josco. I love Joe Josco's art, but I don't really know why Joe Josco was given actually the introduction part. Maybe they could have a, like a second introduction or somebody else kind of, uh, if they have to interview somebody about the, what the, about the stories here, I will actually give that to Adam Hughes because he was a big part of the collection as, you know, creating a lot of the covers. Now, uh, this is her, her, uh, Gerardo Sandoval. Gerardo Sandoval, it's a, a Mexican artist. Um, I'm also Mexican, so I'm proud of my Mexican friend, <laughs> my Mexican uh, uh, artist. But they, you know, he does have an art which is a little more like uh, you know, kind of manga style uh, in animation style. You can see that uh, he was part of the previous collection. He did some, so like I point that out. I think it was the second volume. Uh, of course, he was here too. Um, the artist is uh, very. Uh, he has a particular style. I'm not gonna say that I'm a, such a fan of it. But it really looks cool. You know, he's been involved with a lot of stuff with Marvel and stuff with DC. He has done a couple of stuff with other companies. So, so he's he's all around uh, very good. He he does he knows what he's doing. So, his art's a little busy here. I can say that. But uh, it plays out well, I suppose. Which, like I said, this collection contains a lot of people. And here is the second mistake here. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not. It may, might be my error, but I think this is the second mistake. This is an Adam Hughes cover. This is actually issue number 42, if I'm not mistaken, of um, uh, the main run. But uh, actually, Q Chaw was the one that actually did the cover for this. And actually, they corrected this at the end on the cover list, you know, the gallery. At uh, the cover gallery, you can see the Q Chaw cover, but they added this one here. If I'm not mistaken, that was a mistake. That's wrong. Uh, this was, and I know that there were a lot of variants where actually they were kind of switching between variants. And this is Drew Johnson, another artist that did a lot of stuff. Uh, Drew Johnson is okay, but he does he does pretty good with Lara. And this is, uh, but yes, uh, I, you know, they uh, sometimes they switch covers uh, in between. They did that a lot. There were a lot of variant stuff that sometimes repeats. But uh, and there were a lot of repeats. But uh, for some reason, I don't think that was the case here. So I think that was another mistake. Uh, uh, you know, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But I, I think I'm, I'm right. I, I don't think. And even research something online, find trying to find out if that was the case, and I didn't find anything. So yeah, I think I'm right. Uh, but here, you know, he drew Johnson. He does a really interesting art. Uh, Drew Johnson has worked for, uh, I think, almost everyone, for almost every company. Um, he does a lot of his art. Um, uh, you know, a lot of this art is, you know, kind of blends uh, in, in, into, in comparison to the other one. So there's not a separation from one to the other. This is uh, covered by Lance Sang. Uh, Lance Sang uh, was actually, he does a lot of, um, he has worked exclusively for Tub Cow. Um, you know, and Clarence last sang, and he, he you have Carlos Mo Mota and Manny Clark. Now, Carlos Mota uh, in the pencils, um, he is a Brazilian artist. I really like Carlos. I really like his stuff. He did a, has done a lot of stuff for Marvel, stuff for DC, for a lot of different companies in Brazil, but also in other parts of the world. He has done a lot of stuff for Disney, Disney comics. So Carlos looks great here, uh, and I love. You can see that face, that expression. His panels is are, are good. I liked his panel layout. It's pretty clean, pretty pretty good. The colors might be a bit um, strong here, but man, she looks great. And definitely the body looks good. He is definitely had a realistic, kind of cartoonish uh, style combined, which is really, really good. I really like this. 
it's an interesting story. You know, I think uh, she's going back into her high school years. Uh, she looks great there. Definitely, it's a nice kiss. And uh, you know, that's how it is. Now, uh, this is another one, Jordan's part part seven. I think this is Brian Tan. That's the cover, Brian Tan's cover. No, it's Billy Tan. I'm sorry, Billy Tan. I, I got confused a little bit. But the artist Manny Clark who helped, in this case, uh, Carlos on the previous one. But uh, this is an adventure in the, uh, the you know, in some Wild West adventure. I think it's an Australia Wild West adventure or something like that. I don't think it's Wild West uh, in, in America. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember because I haven't read it in a while. Uh, but the, love Manny. Uh, I think his art is good. I think he did pretty good here. Now, Marlo Alquisa was the one doing the inkings, and, and the big part of this book, he did a lot of the inking. Marlo Alquisa is a very well-known uh, inker. And he has worked for a lot of different companies. Um, really cool. Uh, he's, I like his ink. It's simple. It's good. It's just, just straight to the point. It just without really giving much or distorting some of the art. He's just good. And I really like this. I like this panel. I really like this one. It's really cool. I don't know. This is like I said. You know, journeys is more like about like it, the, the name says. You know, for the namesake is journey. So there's a lot of journeys. There's a lot of different adventures and different situations. So uh, that's what make it cool. You know, something different. It's not following a same timeline or same storyline it just follows whatever depending on the artist or depending on what they want to do and they are in this case Avery was doing a lot of a great job and this is a, a Finch a David Finch cover really cool and again this is Billy Tan Fiona Avery she's just doing you know creating different adventures different stories she's trying different things uh, Tyson uh, Wengler was the the, uh, the, the the person did the colors she did a lot of the colors here but uh, this is an adventure. This is pretty cool. There's a lot of things here. Um, definitely, I wouldn't say that this it would be like a must read per se uh, or the must have. If you don't really have the money, if you have to choose between the four or you only have the option to choose maybe one or two, I would definitely go for number one uh, first, the first volume, the first archive. Pretty cool. And perhaps uh, uh, somewhere in between level uh, uh, archives two and three but four you know it depends you know it, I, I like it because it complements the story and I read some of this and I bought this when they came out some of them not all of them so now to have them all complete here at least all the journeys uh, it, it's good uh, definitely it's a good thing and really showcases how fun this book was and what they planted this is Billy Tan this is when he was doing some of his art uh, like covers with paint he was painting cover pretty cool I think he does well there and Manny Clark again continues on like I said Manny Clark did a pretty good job there he does a pretty good job uh, definitely an adventure and some and some Amazonian uh, with some Amazonian tribes, pretty cool. All of, uh, some of this kind of inspire what the movies, uh, uh, no, no, the movies, some of the games that they were related created um, uh, for 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 you know for for this character, which is is kind of interesting that you know the inspiration kind of cross over. The people take inspiration for a lot of this art from different uh, from a lot of different subjects, not necessarily from the games, but also from the comic books. And other Billy Tan, uh, beautiful, beautiful the way he did it here. And uh, Manny Clark continues on. Uh, another one. This is cool. I really like it. I really like it. I don't know. Just have fun. This is what part about this comic book I like. I like the adventure aspect of it. It's not a serious one. This is not like the newer comics, which I, I have enjoyed. And this is Ido's cover. Uh, and again, Manny Clark continue on. Um, the, the newer uh, Lara Croft is more like a coming to age story, you know, like the girl that is trying to define herself, find herself. These are not the case. These are more simplistic because in this in this story, uh, Lara knows who she is and she's not trying to define herself. She's just uh, following adventure. She's following her heart and doing what she does. And, uh, and that's what makes it simple. It's a simple adventure story. It's reminiscent of a lot of the older adventure stories that I grew up with. You know, I grew up reading a lot of Turok, uh, Tarzan, when I was a kid. I read some of the older comics, and definitely this reminds me all of that, that adventure aspect of it. Now, the pencils, pencils here are Billy Tan. Billy Tan does good. I like Billy Tan, too. Um, you can see that. Billy's been everywhere. He's done a lot of work for a lot of people. And um, everybody loves Billy Tan, I think. Yeah, I, I think I do. Uh, like this cover, uh, I don't remember the name of this guy. This is actually, uh, let me see that, uh, Matt Haley. Well, Matt Haley, 
Uh, he's an artist. He has done a lot of stuff for uh, motion comics, if I'm not mistaken. He has done stuff for different companies. He does a lot of illustration. Um, uh, he does for a lot of things, not only necessarily for comics, so, but he did that. And Daryl Banks did uh, this. Uh, I'm not a fan, I would say, of Daryl. Uh, he has a cartoony style. Which is interesting. Some of the things I I like. I like this panel. Anything that involves for uh, you know Lara Croft, I do like for some reason. You know, I don't know. I'm just a guy. I just like her. But um, the art is okay. A, a bit busy, I would say. Too busy, which can make it harder sometimes to follow up. But and the colors here doesn't really help. They're really strong. Uh, but uh, other than that, you know, she's, he's okay. And um, the stories are good. And this is the part where I, like, I would say about this collection is that they experiment with the different artists. They did a lot of experimentation, which is good. I, I like experimentation. Uh, take over. This is Tony Daniel cover. Who doesn't like Tony Daniel? He's really pumping it nowadays with DC. But yeah, you, you got it there. This is Scott Benefield, another artist that has worked for a lot of other people. The inks are Jason Rodriguez, another inker and cover artist um, that does a lot of stuff for himself. I, I do like Benefield's approach to the character for some reason. I do like the figure. Some things are better than others. Um, not a fan of that that face there, but I do like some of his art. Um, I don't know. The more I got, I got into reading these stories, the more I really find... Um, I find the art better and better. At least I find that things that I didn't appreciate as much earlier, I can appreciate it now even more. So that's the part what I really like, and I always recommend people to have these collections because these collections really kind of shape the, the way you see the characters and make you see them better. The only thing I don't like about this panel here is that her face is covered. That was a big mistake. How can you do that? Definitely, that's they try to cram something you know, in, in, into the page. To finish the story, maybe he was just running out of space and he just crammed it like that. That's just bad, bad business. He couldn't just at least just probably lower it a little bit. But, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes people do crazy stuff and thinking that people are not going to notice. Some people might not notice, but other people that are more um, well-versed, I suppose, and they more comics, they will tell you and they will crucify you for doing stuff like that. But that happens. Arabian Nights, another Billy Tan. Uh, pretty cool. This is all painted by Billy Tan. Fiona is still doing the writing here. Really cool. Love the the way Billy does here. The color, the combination. They're really interesting. It's a lot of stories that I'm not gonna tell you that I'm a, such a fan of this art style. But I, it depends on the artist. Some artists are so great at doing it, and I think Billy Tan does a really good job doing it. And um, I don't know. As some artists they do it. I just don't care much about it, and they don't get my money from you know if I, I see it. But here, I think. Billy, he does. He does a very good job doing it. So I think he, he, I will give him kudos for that. I give his art on this style here like a nine out of ten, I suppose, or eight out of ten at least. Um, but yes, we're looking cool. Look at that. Definitely, very, very cool stories. And this is the greatest treasure of all. And this is Joe Jusco cover, but also the art. And this is one a lot of people love. And Dan Jurgens was the scripter. Uh, Joe did such a phenomenal job. Joe does such an art. He is so realistic. And look at that. It looks like you know he's taking pictures of people. Uh, so might might confi uh, confuse him with other artists, you know, and thinking that he's just uh, photoshopping. But he's not. He's not swiping images online. He's just art. You know, he's creating art of his own. And Joe, Joe does it. He is an artist. He is a definitely a definition of a good artist that knows his trade. And I like that. I like the way he does. Here you can see that. Look at that. Look at that. It's just gorgeous. So, so realistic. And so good. Um, I don't know. He, he, he considers when, uh, when they ask him, Joe, ask him what is the, the job that he has more pleasure doing and what's the one that he considers his best work, he, uh, he tells you he's going to point out this is his best work. He loves this. He remembers that. He was given the opportunity. This looked like a really horror movie, kind of. He remembers that. And he says that, you know, it was, you know, something that, you know, he really had fun memories. He asked for this job. When there was asked, he wanted to do it. He asked for them to give him the opportunity, and it was given to him. And you know what? He, you know, knocked it off the park. You know, he really did it. It's just gorgeous. The art here is gorgeous. Definitely good. And then we got to the cover gallery. And, of course, you got David Finch here. You have uh, Andy Park. This is one he was doing some of those, uh, you know, aquarella stuff or some of those um, colors. Uh, uh, Ching, uh, Brian Ching. 
you have a Joe Joe's coat cover you have of course Andy Park again you have a, a Michael Lopez cover really cool cool cover here this is uh, Drew Johnson how are we gonna love this one of course Adam Hughes Adam Hughes then another Adam Hughes Adam Hughes you see Adam Hughes there's a lot of stuff here this is Q Cha. This is actually the actual cover that I was mentioning, the one that was uh, done by uh, added by mistake uh, uh, on one of the issues. This is actually the real, real cover. That you have Clarence Lansang, you have uh, Billy Tan, you have David Finch. Here you have another Billy Tan, very cool. Another Billy Tan, and you got Ida's Core, another Ida's Core. This covers were okay. And of course, Matt Haley. I really like this cover. It really looks like a very, very 70s style cover. Then here you have Tony Daniel. And of course, you got Billy Tan again. Beautiful cover. And of course, Joe Jesco. Gorgeous cover. And there is here Shadow of the Cat, a lost, a lost Lara Croft manga. There is a manga that was found by some of the, you know, the, the, the fans. They found this missing manga that was never published. Uh, and it's added, and it's added here. So this is another bonus. Really cool. This is very cool. You know, manga. You know, there's manga actually for Lara Croft for Tomb Raider in Japan, but something that has never been seen in America or in other parts of the world. So it's really cool that this was found and the art was there added as a as a bonus, as a plus. Well now, in conclusion, do I recommend these books? I, I certainly do. I do recommend this collection. As you can see there's difference in the sizes. You know the archive one it's a bit smaller. Archive two is the largest. Actually it's as large as archive four but here is three is kinda in between. So they're they're good. But theirs are great together. Now are they complete no, they're not complete. They're missing some issues that have to do with crossovers. Any crossover that has to do with Witchblade, uh, with the Darkness, uh, with Vampirella, uh, and also with uh, the, the uh, Turner's Fathom, all of them, they're not included here. And there's other crossovers that I might miss. Some of the stuff that came out for Wizard, some covers that came out for Wizard, like uh, like Aphrodite cover, things like that. They're missing here. So it's sad that it was not included here. If, uh, in this case, Dark Horse decides to come with an Archives Volume 5 at some point, or like 4.5 or something like that, I will definitely buy it if they include all, this, all those things, uh, all those crossovers. That's the only thing that's missing here. Uh, you know, art there was good. There were some of the greatest artists there too, and, uh, but they didn't include it for, you know, licensing issues. Now, do I recommend this issues? Do I recommend actually four? Because this is the, 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 the definitely the, the, the protagonist of this video. I definitely do. If you are a completionist and you want to have the whole collection, I definitely really recommend it because it will complement. It's not going with the storylines. It's not following the same, the, the first three volumes. It's totally something different, different stories. But it really gives you a better picture of the character and different stories. And what really Top Gow did, which was fantastic for the time, uh, one of my favorite the runs, and actually the run that made me come back to comic books uh, in the early 2000s was Tomb Raider. And I really, I'm, I'm a big fan of the character, I'm a big fan of this comic books, and I'm definitely, I definitely recommend it. So, I recommend it if you have the previous issues. If, as a standalone issue, a standalone book, well, it depends. It depends on if you really like what you saw, uh, if you like really separate stories, but it's not going to really, uh, you know, make a difference or make the world, you know, go a different way you know it's just not gonna give you all it's not gonna be such a fantastic writing that you're gonna be blown away but definitely it's definitely a fun one and definitely one that I enjoy and I really enjoyed this collection which is very the price is pretty pretty good and you can find it in most places and I have the links below if you decide to go through Amazon and purchase each one of them so once again thank you for watching this video uh, please like comment and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification button so you're reminded of every video uh, every Saturday there's a new book video review follow my 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 instagram follow my facebook page and uh twitter account and uh thanks again thanks again for uh supporting my channel so god bless you my friends talk to you again next time we can make a wildfire get away